Hello and high fives out there to everybody. My name is Jack Jennings and this is my story. It is definitely a story of love, mercy, and grace from my Holy Father, as well as forgiveness that I received from Him and my family. I stand before you today as absolute proof that God can change anyone that is in darkness, addiction, or self-pity and bring them out into the light. But, and I started babbling in tears again. I'm just laughing and crying and laughing and crying. Thank you, God and Jesus. Now I could go to Windsor. I had to make some sort of a, a deal, hopefully. So just how was I going to be able to do that? I just had no idea, actually. And I knew that that conviction was definitely imminent. So today I'd like to start this one out on uh, Psalms 139, 13 through 16. For you created my inmost being. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. And that's a beautiful verse there. Our Holy Father, I think, lays out earthly paths for all of us, even if you don't believe in him. This also holds true with his planning for me and you as we live our daily lives. Before this day of my realignment, he was putting things in motion for me to benefit from. Things that I did, but didn't really know how that was going to affect me and, you know, after I changed my life. Good things that started happening to me right after my alignment. Good, all kinds of good things. The next few minutes has a lot of details, and I would like to challenge you or your children mathematically <laughs> to see how they're doing in school, basically. So grab a pencil and paper, and let's do some math, and let's just see who ends up being correct. You know, I will let you know when the math part starts. It'll be here in a little bit. My day of realignment on February 18th, 2012, the following thing is, you know, what he put in motion for me prior to that day. In April of 2010, I, you know, I just, I just had to change my earthly life. I just needed to get away from this addiction somehow. And it's, if you've been there, boy, you know what I'm talking about. So I had to put things in order to get my life back on track. I needed to find an actual home, a house, or an apartment, or something like that, and that would require a real job, believe it or not. In order to accomplish that, I needed real monies and, you know, to get a real place. I needed to find a job within walking distance as I was living in this old motorhome. It had no bathroom. It was, oh boy, it was on the north end of Fort Collins. You know, I put in my applications in, in places close to where I was staying, you know, at a machine shop, and then a come and go, and then a nighttime or part-time job at a liquor store. You know, the next day, believe it or not, and I, was, I was hired at a machine shop for 40 hours a week, and the liquor store also hired me from 5 to 10, you know, three afternoons during the week. It was rough. Boy, it was rough at first, but I started to save some money. You know, and, and you know, now I'm a recovering cocaine addict, and only because I could not afford it before. When you get money and you're a cocaine addict or an ex addict, guess what? The miracle here, folks, is that even though I was still suffering from weakness of that drug addiction, for some wonderful reason, I decided to use alcohol <laughs> as a cure for cocaine. It's one, you know, one addiction to another, basically. Working at a liquor store was golden for that, believe me. For me, it was so much easier to quit drinking than quitting the evil addiction of crack cocaine. I guarantee you that, now that I know that. Well, fast forward a little bit, God blessed me again, and I managed to save enough money to get an apartment in October of 2010. You know, I was still drinking pretty heavily at night, but no cocaine is another, I mean, that is so hard to get, to get it off of, you know. For the most part of 2011, I started doing my own recycling and different things just to keep afloat. It was about September of 2011 I started having issues with depression. Man, my work in the recycling business basically was hitting an all-time low. 
or you know what god was not in me then either so the steel prices were down and you know i was just having trouble monetarily i just was really in depression during that time and during the months of october and november of 2011 i was on seventeen hundred dollars behind in rent on november 8th and I received a call, a call from a gal that worked for the state of Colorado. And I applied from some old age pension plan about a month earlier. Then I forgot all about that. And, you know, she said that I qualified for the retirement and to come in to talk to her. And I did. And, man, I was approved right away and received funding that very day for $500. And the math is coming up pretty quick here. And will continue through the next year. This was just great as I'd be able to consistently add 350 to 450 bucks, you know, every every month toward rents and stuff. But I still had, you know, I made the 500, but I still had other bills as well. This was still not enough to get me caught up. Letter of pleading. That's the math check right now. It's going to start any second here. Letter of pleading. I never even heard of a le letter of pleading to start with. So I had no idea where the idea came from. Letter of pleading. As Maggie Dog and I were walking in the future field alignment, I field of a realignment, I called back behind my apartment. But that was a profound thought that came to me was a letter of pleading. Man. So I wrote a letter to Neighbor to Neighbor, December 27th, pleading for a second chance with a proposed, all this stuff just started coming through me, a proposed $1,400 promissory note. This is the math part. We're going to start doing some stuff. Promissory note for back rent and to get caught up. And on the 28th of December, they, ex they accepted my offer. Keep in mind, God, again, was just, it wasn't exactly in me. I mean, he was there, but I didn't know it. That makes sense. And I was still $1,950 behind in rent in December of 2011. Start with that. So promissory note deducted $1,400 from that. From the $1,950, I left a balance of $550. You're right. You might have been right. With a payment due on that note, of $120 a month, so leaving a balance due of $1,220. Does that sound right? Okay. This is still a lot for me, though, at this time. You know, I also had other bills, electric, food, gas, cable, and, man, I will $1,220, bucks, you know. But my OAP, I was able to start the new year, January 1st in 2012. I'm getting closer to the day of my realignment. You know, I paid $670. I owed $1220. I paid $670, leaving a balance of $550. $550 going into February of 2012. For February, I would owe a $550 balance. Plus rent of $550 plus $120 you know, payment for the promissory note. That totals $1,220. You got that? And all I had then was 450 bucks to pay, which left a $770 balance. I was already overdue with my promissory note payment. You know, I knew that this was not acceptable to the landlord. On March 1st, the rent would be another $550 plus $120 payment for my promissory note. And that totals... $1,440. So if you said 14, if you came up with $1,440, you, you win the bingo. <laughs> so that, that's the end of the math lesson. I'm, I'm probably all happy about that. So forward to the day of my realignment on February 18th. It was a Friday, it was, and I had around 650 bucks. And all these things were coming. I was just, everything was going crazy. And so that, and that was on a Friday. So then I went to neighbor to neighbor on Monday and pleaded again with them because I was in basically in total violation there of all the agreement that I had before just to trust me, you know, because my life had changed. And when I walked in there and I talked to them, I said, you know, frost went boom, God, Jesus talked to me, his dove flew by me, my dog jumping up and all down. And through Jesus, I had God in me. And man, that made a huge difference. And I said I would get all the monies straightened out as soon as possible and they were so gracious and they toward me that day and it was a miracle that day and my current monetary problems were solved for a long time
basically to this day. So how was I able to do that? How was I able to do that? It was from God through Jesus. That's what happened. So I'm going to tease you for the next part here. It says, what would any or all of you do if someone offered you 170 major appliances, ranges, refrigerators, and dishwashers that worked? 170 of them. Maybe do a little math on that. <laughs> and which ones are which, you know. That's it. See you in part five. What have you learned so far from watching this video? Number one, our Holy Father lays out earthly paths for all of us, even if you don't believe in Him. Number two, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope.